Welcome in to a daily editorial here on the KE Report. Happy to report that I am chatting with Jordan Royburn. He is the editor and founder of The Daily Gold. And Jordan, let's just recap what we're seeing on the charts today. Silver seems to be leading the way. That is putting in a nice move up above $17 an ounce right now. GDX is also up almost a percent. But more importantly, I think we are seeing silver lead the way on top of gold. And you could even argue that some of the gold stocks are outperforming. Just as a general comment here, is this move for the precious metals, is this actually starting? Maybe we could see a breakout here soon. Um, Well, it really depends what we're talking about as far as a breakout, because um I mean, there's there's many places I could I could take that question because if you're looking at I wrote an article a couple of days ago talking about if you look at the major junior ETFs which are GDXJ and then GOEX which is Explorers and then SILJ which is Silver Juniors. If you look at that, there's been a downtrend since that's really started February 2017, and they're very close to breaking that downtrend. I bet SILJ has broken that downtrend today. Um, I mean, as far as the main breakout that we're concerned with, which is gold going above 1360 to 1370, uh, it's not quite there yet. Uh, and same thing with the gold stocks. Um, looking at GDX and GDXJ, they still have a little bit, a uh, little bit of room to move before they would break key levels. For GDXJ, the, we, we can talk about the similar downtrend line, the downtrend that began last February. Uh, that that is close to breaking though. But if you're looking at GDX, for example, it hasn't had declining tops. It's really been trading slightly lower to sideways over the last year and a couple months. So for GDX to have a real significant breakout, that's going to have to go through 25 or 26 on a weekly basis. So there's many as far as breakouts. I don't mean to babble on here, but it re- it really depends exactly what we're looking at um, and. Um, coming back to gold i mean that's probably the main breakout that we're we're talking about and that i mean looking at it now it's at 1355 or a few pennies below i mean that's that's pretty healthy but that's not broken out yet it still has to close above 1360 and then i think 1372 was the highest close in 2016 so that's really the main thing we're looking at but Corey, i know we'll get into it a lot of the leading indicators on a very short term basis they're looking very healthy right now so that tells me that this strength should be sustainable in the very short term. Okay, so I do agree from kind of the broad sector perspective for the precious metals. Still some work to do on the upside, but some of these other indicators are very encouraging. Let's first start off with the silver stocks. They have, in the short term, done fairly well. But today, what are you seeing in terms of the silver stocks joining in on the rally that we're seeing in just this metal itself? Well, you know, I would go back to what we talked about a week or two weeks ago, and we were talking about how some of the silver stocks had started to sniff this move out. Um, They had started to outperform, and it was pretty noticeable if you were just watching on a daily basis. And so we saw that, and and even even the ETFs, I think SIL and SILJ, even in the last week or so, they were starting to uh, trend higher and, and and outperform silver, and so that was a good sign. So the the the, the short squeeze in silver today, which is up almost three percent, I mean that's a great move, but it's not a surprise if you've been watching the silver stocks uh, because they've really been telegraphing that something was going to happen. So I, and the thing that I really like, uh, which we've seen recently is coming into the week over the last seven days. And it's true for gold and silver where you had the stocks were outperforming the metals very strongly, uh, for the seven trading days prior to the beginning of this week. And so even though gold had not broken out yet, that was a really good sign that, you know, the strength we were seeing would probably continue. And that was different from, um, a lot of times in the past when gold was very close to a breakout, the stocks would just really be doing nothing. So coming into this week, the silver stocks are outperforming silver. The gold stocks are outperforming gold. It, it looked really good coming into the week. So I'm not surprised that we're seeing a big move in silver right now. It's just reflecting uh, the 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 uh, outperformance that the silver stocks were showing and, and hinting at coming into the week. 
Okay. Well, it is nice to see silver start to benefit on the upside. It's relatively been a laggard here in the precious metal sector. As for the gold stocks, though, you did mention the miners, GDX, GDXJ. I've been chatting a lot with our friend David Erfley, and he was mentioning this rounded bottom that both of these charts, you could argue, have been putting in. Again, they have not broken out to any sort of short-term new higher highs, but they are testing those downtrends lines that they've been in how do you balance out that divergence there when you're testing out a downtrend line but you also have some short-term highs that are very close as well to that downtrend line and so you're you're speaking about the the tight the uh, tightness as far as um the resistance and support both being close by. Is that what you're getting at? Yes. Yeah, it really just speaks to how tight of a range this has been in for how long it's been in, too. Yeah, I mean, we can go back to the volatility indicators, which we spoke about, I want to say, three or four weeks ago. And those even long-term volatility indicators, I mean, they were at 10, 15-year lows in some cases. So it's really incredible, the tightness that we're seeing in the markets and you know talking about the support and resistance pinching in on both sides i'll just reference the editorial that i wrote a couple days ago Um, you can see the lines that i drew there on on many of the junior indices where resistance and support was getting very especially on gdxj i mean it's getting i don't think gdxj has broken it yet i could be wrong it really needs a strong move above 34 that would be my guess Uh, it's trading at 34.20 now so maybe it's a day or two away from such a move but um, yeah, I mean the, the 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 volatility has just been at at multi year lows, and you know we're probably going to start to see some increases in volatility, but nothing that's really massive yet. But I think we are starting. We we will start to see kind of I don't want to say an unwinding, but but kind of a reversal as far as really low volatility. We're, we're going to start to see volatility trend higher and then momentum will trend higher and Corey, that'll happen when we break above these key levels that'll happen after gold breaks above 1360 and 1370 because it's so close it'll happen after gold breaks above 25 26 on a weekly basis and you know probably after gdxj breaks above uh it's hard to say but if it makes a weekly close above 34 and can run up to 38 uh, that area that would probably be accompanied by higher volatility. So higher volatility and momentum, we're not quite there yet, but I think the seeds have been sown, so to speak, that it, that it is very likely to happen uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, also considering how much volatility we're seeing in other markets too, it's actually been a little bit surprising of the lack of volatility we've seen in a sector that usually is quite volatile. Jordan, let's also talk about some of the breadth indicators that you have built and follow for the metal sector. They, again, haven't been able to climb above 50 recently, but some of the recent moves are a bit more encouraging, aren't they? Yes, and uh, there's two that I'll discuss. The one that you're mentioning is I have a basket of 50 junior stocks that I track. Probably half the basket is stocks that are uh, in GDXJ or in the upper half, whereas the other 25, some of those are probably at the bottom of GDXJ, and there's probably a few that are not quite in the GDXJ yet. Uh, but so looking at that, I'm looking at what percentage of those stocks have closed above the 20-day, 50-day, and then 200-day moving average. The 200-day moving average is really the important one. And something I've noticed, Corey, is over the last 14 or 15 months or so, you know, we go back to that that peak in early February 2017. Since that point, uh, in that junior basket, uh, 51% has been the peak uh, going back to that date as far as what percentage of the basket has closed above the 200-day moving average. So looking at this breadth indicator, it's never gone above 51% as far as the last year or so. Now, coming into the week, it was 42%. Um, I haven't updated it yet, but I have a feeling after today, it's probably, you know, it, it might have it might have exceeded 51% today, uh, so my subscribers will find out later today or tomorrow. But uh, that's something, Corey, that's very close to breaking above 51%. And that would confirm, you know, that, that kind of uh, breadth indicator would confirm uh, a strong move in GDXJ or a breakout of the downtrend we were talking about earlier. And then secondly, one basic indicator, I mean, it's not anything I've created, but 
Now, looking at the advanced decline line for GDX, something I noticed coming into the week, it had also it had made a positive divergence along with the stocks versus the metal. These indicators had made higher highs coming into the week, and they had been very strong over the last, uh, yeah, very strong over the last seven days. So coming into the week, they were quite strong and showing a higher high, whereas GDX was not. So that kind of very short-term indicator bodes very well for the short term. And then even yesterday, I know GDX didn't really do that much, but the advanced decline line it had a solid move higher. So again, the internals for this market uh, and, and the leading indicators that I look at, be it breadth or be it the stocks against the metals, they're all pointing to more gains ahead in the short term. Okay. So, hey, I think we can be quite encouraged by all the moves we're seeing, especially the moves today. But Jordan, let's just take it on a very short term. This is just the middle of the week. How important is it for the next two trading days on Thursday and Friday for these markets to continue their moves up? Well, it's very important. I mean, you, you want to see a market close the week very strong. I mean, you want to see it close also the month strong and the quarter strong. But uh, most people look at weekly charts, so it, it's very important for these gains to hold. Uh, you want to see big, white, strong candles uh, on, on the weekly charts, and, and that that basically implies that a market is holding its gains into the weekend. I mean, you know, a weak market, when a weak market rallies and trends higher on the weekly charts, you rarely see big, full, white candles. I mean, you'll see white, but you'll see kind of the close is well, you know, well below where the high of the week is because that shows you selling. But the reverse is with a strong market, you want to see those strong white candles and you want to see the market close near the highs for the week. So it's very important that we see the, the little strength that we've been seeing to start the week, uh, that we see that hold up into the weekend. Okay, we will leave it on that. Let's just make sure that the next two days are also following through on these gains. So far, a lot has been building slowly but steadily for these markets. If we can get any sort of a breakout, because we're still not quite there in all of these markets, but at least we're trending again closer to these higher resistance levels. Jordan, it's always great chatting with you, and I hope you have a great rest of your week.